and our series West teams are just outside of downtown Los Angeles at Irwindale Speedway for their first standalone race of the season. The first of five races in the Golden State in 2022. Who's going to be the first to conquer the California short tracks? Find out next on NBC Sports. Welcome to the Napa Auto Parts 150 presented by the West Coast Stock Car Hall of Fame right here at Irwindale Speedway. My name is Charlie Crawl, and I'll be calling all the action for you here tonight. We'll have Jesse Punch patrolling down on Pitt Road as well. Let's take a quick look at the weather. It was a beautiful warm afternoon, but temperatures are going to cool off into the 60s here as the sun goes down. There's been a slight breeze coming from the west, but we have no chance of rain. It is an absolutely picture-perfect night for racing here at Irwindale. Two-time defending series champion Jesse Love is also a three-time consecutive winner here at Irwindale Speedway, but he is committed to running on the national level of the Arca Menard Series and some Camping World Truck Series races here in 2022. So that leaves the podium wide open for a new champion and a new winner here at Irwindale. Who's it going to be? For more on that, we send it down to Jesse Punch. The last time the Arco West Series raced here at Irwindale Speedway, P.J. Pedrin Shelley earned the pole position and brought home a third place finish. P.J. returns this year in the exact same race car, and he told me he's confident he can do two spots better. Starting one spot in front of P.J. here tonight is Jake Drew, the highest Arco West finisher from the season opener at Phoenix. He had two top five finishes here at Irwindale last year, and he told me he feels more prepared than ever to take on this racetrack tonight. One other driver that had two top five finishes here last season is Joey East. He rolls off P3 here tonight, and he said he's all smiles and all confidence coming out of qualifying. We'll have to see how that translates into tonight's race. Thanks, Jesse. I don't think we've ever seen Joey not smiling when he's here at the racetrack. Now going into tonight's race, the point standings look like this after the combined race with the National Arkham and Art Series in Phoenix. Taylor Gray leads the standings with 47 points. However, Jake Drew in the number six car, the only full-time West Series driver that made the top 10. He's sitting eight points back out of the lead. But first, we have to crown tonight's winner. And earlier today, the General Tire Pole Award was won by rookie Tanner Reif. The number nine Vegas Fastener Manufacturing Ford for Sunrise Racing. Let's hear from tonight's General Tire Pull Award winner. I'm so glad to be here. The team worked so hard before that last session and sat in the car and predicted the run and thought about the line and got down on the bottom and digged up off it and got a good line uh, coming off and got the pull and they were going to have a really good run for this race. Why don't we go ahead and let, take a look at tonight's race analysis for the Napa Auto Parts 150 presented by the West Coast Stock Car Hall of Fame. It's the 31st race in series history here at Irwindale Speedway. Of course, half mile oval, turns banked on both ends of the racetrack. There's turns three and four right there, but both ends of the racetrack banked progressively. Nine degrees down at the bottom, 12 degrees up at the top. We're gonna go 150 laps here this evening. We'll take a break at lap 75. We take a look at tonight's Bounty Rookie Spotlight. Driver of that number 16 car that Jesse Love drove to two wins here last year, Austin Herzog. Driver of that number 16 Napa Auto Parts Chevrolet for Bill McAnally Racing. This is the team that has won the last three races here at Irwindale. And of course, Bill McAnally Racing has had a lot of success here. Over a dozen victories for BMR. And our Bounty Rookie Spotlight shining brightly on Austin Herzog tonight. A lot of pressure on this young man's shoulders. This car has won the last two. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at our general tire starting grid while we have the opportunity. Of course, Tanner Reif on the pole. He's going to be joined on the front row by Cole Moore, our defending Rookie of the Year. Car number 99, Joey East with a great qualifying run. He's going to be joined back in row two by Trevor Huddleston. Trevor is the all-time leading winner here at Irwindale Speedway. Of course, he picked up his first West Series victory here back in 2019. Todd Souza, Jake Drew back in row number three. We're going to keep an eye on both of those drivers. Of course, Jake Drew tied for the championship, officially finished second last year. We'll keep an eye on both of those drivers. P.J. Pedrincelli and Austin Herzog back in row four. 
Sebastian Arias and Takuma Koga. A couple of international drivers back in row five. Bridget Burgess, Nick Janitis, Chris Loudon, Stafford Smith, and Paul Pedrincelli rounding out our 15-car starting grid. Denise Engel giving the field one to go. Next time by, we'll go racing for 150 laps. One of the most beautiful short track racing facilities in the country. Folks, if you have not been to Irwindale Speedway and you are a fan of short track racing, put this place on your bucket list. It is absolutely immaculate. The racing here, intense. Chuck Welch has the lights off on the pace car. He's about to make a hard left-hand turn and bring the pace car down into the infield. Jake Drew, or excuse me, Tanner Reif. Jake drove that car last year. Tanner Reif, Cole Moore up on the front row. Coming to green. Tanner Reif and Cole Moore leading the field to the green. It is time to rock, roll, and rumble, folks. Green flag out here at Irwindale. Tanner Reif will take the extreme low line through turns one and two. He's going to jump out to the lead, but let's see what Cole Moore can do. He's going to dive to the inside of the racetrack. A little slip and slide, dip and dive here on lap one. Tanner Reif, he's going to hold on to the lead and come across the start finish line to lead lap number one. And look at that three wide battle for second behind him. Joey East in the 54 car with a good start. East to the bottom of the racetrack, trying to work his way past Cole Moore. Trevor Huddleston in the mix. Already some intense action. Ooh, almost. Joey East tried to clear Cole Moore off a of turn two. Didn't quite have him cleared. Cole's going to dive to the outside of the racetrack. He's going to pull along side by side there and retake that second position down into turns one and two. And they're both catching Tanner Reif. Tanner using the outside line. Cole Moore committed to the inside. That more the middle groove of the racetrack, actually. And Joey East all the way below that white line. We're going to have a three-way battle for the lead here momentarily, folks. They filed single file for about half a second right there, and then Cole Moore dove down to the bottom side of the racetrack. And we're going to string them single file, but there goes Cole all the way to the bottom. Hugging that white line. He's going to pull alongside Rife down the backstretch. Rife's going to use the momentum of the top side of the racetrack and that 12 degrees of banking to his advantage. We're going to see that all night long, folks. That top lane with all of that banking, and I say all of that banking, 12 degrees, not all that much, but the most banking we have here allows him to build the momentum and build the speed, but the low side is the short way around, and that's so enticing to some of these drivers. There's Trevor Huddleston working the bottom side through three and four right there. Right now, the top five, stricken single file through turns one and two. Tanner Reif holding on to the lead. Cole Moore in second. Joey East, Trevor Huddleston, and there's Jake Drew. First time we've seen him on screen momentarily there in car number six. Huddleston dipping the nose of the number 50 car down to the inside of Joey East. East with a great qualifying run here. Started third. Of course, Joey picked up his first career victory last season out of Colorado National Speedway. Young man working on the family farm during the week and coming out and fighting for the championship here. The Arkham Iron Series West on the weekends. Again, Huddleston working the bottom side. You really have to commit to that bottom groove if you're going to make it work. And right now, Trevor just can't get the momentum up to slide by and take that position from Joey. As again, great racing up among the top five. Everybody within a car length or two of each other. Here's we're already working lap 12. Cole Moore stalking Tanner Reif down the backstretch into turns three and four. 
You're watching Arkham Menard Series West Racing on NBC Sports. Menard Series West Racing on NBC Sports is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. And by General Tire. Hashtag anywhere is possible. Welcome back to the Napa Auto Parts 150 at Irwindale Speedway. Of course, the Sunrise Racing Team thought they might have had a shot at a couple of victories last year. Jake Drew, controversially, not picking up the win up at Portland last year. Thought he had that one in the bag. So it's been a couple of years for the Sunrise team. Going to victory lane. Pretty solid night going tonight. Tanner Reif holding on to the lead. Jake Drew sitting back in the second position. Excuse me. Back in the third position. There's the driver in second. Joey East in the number 54 car. Everybody kind of separated from one another as we wind our way towards that midway break coming up at lap 75. We'll take a five minute break, allow teams to change tires and make adjustments. That's coming up 22 laps from now. Caution free to this point. Tanner Reif stretching it out now. 1.8 seconds the advantage over Joey East. You saw the Drivers second, third, fourth, and fifth working their way through some of that traffic. Some of these cars, pretty good race cars. P.J. Petrincelli was a driver who contended for the championship last year. P.J. sitting in the eighth position. One of those drivers falling a lap down. Next driver on the chopping block, our body rookie spotlight driver, Austin Herzog, sitting in the seventh position. Next driver potentially fall off the lead lap. He's got about a three-second advantage on the racetrack on Tanner Reif, so a little breathing room. It's a good look at that damage on P.J. Pedrincelli's number 33. Go ahead and check in on our Bounty Rookie Spotlight driver tonight. There's Austin Herzog in that number 16 for Bill McAnally Racing. Of course, we talked about it at the top of the show. This is the car that carried Jesse Love to two wins right here at Irwindale back in 2021. Jesse, what do you have for us? Charlie, I talked to that bounty rookie spotlight driver, Austin Herzog, after practice and qualifying this afternoon, and he was not happy with that race car. He told me they threw not the entire kitchen sink at it, but just about half the kitchen sink as adjustments go, which in talking to some of the other veterans at this racetrack might have been a rookie mistake. Guys like Jake Drew and Trevor Huddleston told me they don't concern themselves with how their race car feels during the day here at Irwindale because as we're seeing right now, everything changes as the sun goes down. Thanks a lot, Jesse. There's Tanner Reif again working on the back bumper of Bridget Burgess down the back stretch. Bridget, of course, a very interesting story. The Burgess family picking up and moving from their home in Australia. Pretty much bringing only the clothes they had on their backs across the Pacific Ocean. Mom, Sarah Burgess, Father Adam, all working on that race car for Sarah. I understand we may be seeing Sarah, who also, she's also the crew chief, folks. She's the crew chief as we see the caution flag coming out for the first time tonight, and there's why. Joey East having some issues. Looks like he may have gotten up into the wall over there in turns three and four. That'll put us under the caution flag for the first time tonight. Joey hasn't been working those tires too hard. He's been working the top side of the racetrack. So what may have happened to put him up into the wall, but definitely some damage to the right side of that car. There you see the number scraped off the side, so he has definitely made some contact with the outside wall. This is Arkham and Art Series West Racing, only on NBC Sports and streamed live on Flow Racing.
This is Arkham and Art Series West Racing, only on NBC Sports and streamed live on Flow Racing. One to go signal given at start finish. Chuck Welch with the lights off on the pace car. Tanner Reif, Jake Drew, the two Sunrise Racing teammates up on the front row. Trevor Huddleston, Cole Moore back in row two. There's Todd Souza, first time we've seen him all night long. He's going to restart from the fifth position alongside Austin Herzog. Of course, P.J. Pedrincelli, last car on the lead lap. He's going to start out back. We come to the restart line. Big flag back out. Field scrambling down into turns one and two. It looks like Trevor Huddleston with a good restart. Everybody kind of scrambling behind. Does not look like Jake Drew got that car to go on the restart. Everybody scrambling behind him. And it looks like Todd Souza may be the one who comes out on the short end of the stick on that one. Souza has dropped all the way outside the top five. And that's why flat left front tire on the 13 car. Tough, tough break for Todd Souza. Driver who will be making his 100th career series start next time out at Kern County. Not how he wanted to end his chances for victory here tonight. And of course, we are just shy of that halfway break coming up at lap 75. Tough decision for Todd to make. Does he stay out? Does he come down pit road? And that's what he's going to do. He's going to come down to Michael Munoz and the crew and get that left front tire change and hope he can pick up a lucky dog somewhere along the way as they flash across the start finish line to complete lap 70. Five to go until that midway break. Trevor Huddleston taking over that second position on the restart. Looking for his third career West Series victory. There's Austin Herzog trying to work his way past Takuma Koga. Not a battle for position, but the battle on the racetrack. There's the top three working down the back stretch. Tanner Reif in the lead. Got about 10 car lengths on Trevor Huddleston. Trevor's got about five car lengths on Jake Drew. Two to go until we reach that midway break. Tanner Reif hasn't felt much pressure all night long so far. Trevor Huddleston trying to change that here as we close in. On our halfway point here in the Napa Auto Parts 150. Coming to lap complete, lap 75 this time around. We'll let the lead lap car cycle through. We should see the caution come out this time around. There's the cross flags from Denise up on the flag stand. Car cycle through. We should get the caution lights on around the speedway. And there they are. Second caution flag of the night. This one for the midway break. Parker Menard Series West Racing from Irwindale Speedway will be right back. Menard Series West Racing on NBC Sports is brought to you by Bounty, the quicker picker upper, and by Richmond Water Heaters, the water heater experts. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at our Richmond Water Heaters mid-race recap. There's a great battle for position early in the race. Joey East, Cole Moore. There's some damage to P.J. Pedrincelli's number 33. Lacey on a warm night here tonight at Irwindale Speedway. Look at that four-car battle for second, third, fourth, and fifth. Great racing here in the early going. There's that battle. Jake Drew trying to work his way past Trevor Huddleston. That was the battle for third. Jake Drew eventually taking over that spot. He was trying to track down Joey East when that happened. Joey had some problems with the right front corner of that car. He went into the outside wall. And on the restart, 
Tough break for Todd Souza in the 13 car. Flat left front tire after some contact on that restart. There's the angle with the crossed flags. Putting us at the halfway point and restacking the field. As we are just past the halfway point, we'll stack them up and let them roll. And I believe we'll have probably, I think, 72 laps remaining by the time we get the green flag. The remainder of the 2022 Arkham and Archery's West schedule will move next to Kern County Raceway on April 23rd. First road course race of the year coming up June 4th at Portland. Then the second road course race coming up on the 11th at Sonoma Raceway. Back here to Irwindale on July the 2nd. The 1,000th race in West Series history coming up on August 20th at Evergreen Speedway. Second race of the year up at Portland Raceway on September the 3rd. All-American Speedway coming up on October 1st. Las Vegas Bull Ring coming up on October 14th. And then we'll settle the season finale. Settle it all at November or on November 5th at Phoenix Raceway. Tanner Reif inside front row for this restart. Trevor Huddleston up on the outside. Jake Drew and Cole Moore back in row two. Austin Herzog, P.J. Pedrincelli back in row three. Takuma Koga, he is back on the lead lap. He's going to start out back in seventh. Is the field rolling towards the restart line. Let's see if Tanner Reif gets the same kind of restart that he did earlier in the race. Green flags back out. Let's see what happens down here into turn one. They made a huge chassis adjustment there on the 50 car during that break. Let's see if it helps Huddle sit here on the short run. He is still side by side with Tanner Reif through turns three and four. Reif will lead him across the start and finish line, but Huddleston's still there. Huddleston does not want to give it up. He's going to slide back into the second position. Now Jake Drew sliding back into third. Cole Moore back into fourth. Here comes Austin Herzog. First time we've seen him up into the top five tonight. Herzog to the inside of his teammate Moore. This is the battle for fourth. Herzog drives it all the way down to the grass there in turns three and four that time. Huddleston still tracking a car length off of our leader, and this is the battle for third. Here comes Cole Moore. He's going to slide up in front of Jake Drew to take over that third position. That's a great pass right there by Cole Moore. That could be a Reese's Sweet move of the race candidate. Cole Moore with the power move to take over the third position. See if Cole can track down that lead duo. They've put some distance on that battle for third, fourth, and fifth. Anna Reif, Trevor Huddleston. Huddleston hasn't lost step at all since that restart. He is on the back bumper of Tanner Reif. Made a big time chassis adjustment on that 50 car during that break. And apparently, that adjustment has worked. Huddleston, who at times was nearly two seconds off of Tanner Reif's pace there in that opening segment of the race, now all over the back bumper. Trevor Huddleston is no stranger to this track. Jesse Punch has more. Trevor Huddleston is back in the field tonight at his home track. He earned his very first Arca West win here back in 2019 in a photo finish. And tonight, he's driving that 50 car, fielded by his dad, track president Tim Huddleston. I was joking with Trevor before the race about knowing this place like the back of his hand, and he laughed and said that would be an understatement. The all-time wins leader here at Irwindale Speedway in a three-time champion. Trevor said, when I'm not racing here, I'm working here, giving fans rides around this place in a two-seater race car. Home track implications aside, this is a career milestone start for Trevor. Start number 50 in the Arca West series for the young 
young 25 year old. Thanks a lot, Jesse. There's Cole Moore in the 99 car. He's broken away a little bit from Jake Drew. Jake back at the fourth position has dropped about 20 car lengths off of Cole Moore. Cole hasn't really reeled in that top two too much. They lost a little bit of ground that time around. So these two, Tanner Reif, Trevor Huddleston stretched it out on the rest of the field. Huddleston trying to stick the nose underneath. to the middle groove of the racetrack and see if he can't make up some ground. Maybe get out and set sail. Anna Reif working the top side of the racetrack. He's got 12 degrees of banking at his disposal. And there's Trevor Huddleston. He's going to dive it all the way down to the bottom side of the racetrack where there's just nine degrees of banking. But there's Chris Loudon again in the in the 11 car, kind of throwing a pick there. On the advance of Trevor Huddleston. Huddleston going to give up a little bit of ground right there. He was all over the back bumper last time through turns three and four. He's given up about five car lengths as they had to work their way through some race traffic. Tanner Reif now three quarters of a second in hand on Trevor Huddleston back in second. Cole Moore has been able to open up a little gap there on Jake Drew. Looks like he still has got a little comfortable advantage right there, but Jake reeling him in just a touch. It's about 20 car lengths. Now it's down to about 10 car lengths. Jake in the number six working the top side of the racetrack. We have seen Cole Moore on the bottom side of the racetrack all night long, folks. That 99 car set up to work that bottom side of the racetrack. He's worked it well this evening, sitting in the third position. You're watching the Napa Auto Parts 150. Back to the Napa Auto Parts 150 at Irwindale Speedway. Huddleston looking to go back to victory lane for the second time in the West Series here at Irwindale Speedway. Of course, we talked about it at the top of the show. The all-time winningest driver here at Irwindale Speedway. We look at Jake Drew trying to track Trevor Huddleston down. These two were teammates last year. We talked about that position that Jesse Love picked up on the final lap last year at Phoenix. None other than Trevor Huddleston. Trevor was the driver that Jesse Love passed. That cost his teammate the championship. It was a very unfortunate 27 seconds or so there for the Sunrise Racing team, but... Jake Drew quickly putting that out of mind. Saw him down at Daytona International Speedway. He was a part of the Arkham and Art Series Road to Daytona program earlier in the season. His first laps ever down at Daytona and had a chance to chat with him down there. And he said, yeah, man, all we can do is put it behind us. We're going to lock and load and try to do one point better here in 2022. Try to go out and get our first win and close on that championship. Jake's always got a big smile on his face and undoubtedly wants to get up there and battle for that second position. He'd like to get up there and track his teammate down as well, Tanner Reif, holding on to the lead. Still unchallenged, 1.3 seconds. The advantage now over this is the battle for second. There's Takuma Koga in the seven car, separating Trevor Huddleston in second from Jake Drew back in third. Drew's going to move to the bottom side of the racetrack and work his way past. Takuma Koga. Takuma's having a pretty solid night tonight, sitting back in the seventh position. out of Nagoya, Japan, making the longest commute to race with us 
here at Riverdale Speedway tonight. Close it in on 25 laps to go. A very clean Napa Auto Parts 150 to this point. What will the final 25 laps bring us tonight? We're about to find out. Jake Drew starting to close in on Trevor Huddleston. The battle for second. Still holding on to the second position. Hasn't been able to make up any ground on Tanner Reif. And he hasn't given up any ground to Jake Drew. Stabilizing here among the top three. That's what 1.3 seconds looks like right there. The advantage between our leader Tanner Reif as he comes across the start finish line to complete lap. 127. Trevor Huddleston holding out of the second position. Jake Drew back in third. Looking around Chris Loudon one more time in the number 11 car. Chris back in the 13th position. Jake Drew working to the inside of Loudon off of turn four. Still not able to make up any ground on Trevor Huddleston. Trevor holding on to the second position. Of course, this is his first start in 2022. He was not out at Phoenix a couple of weeks back. Of course, the Phoenix race, a combination race with the Arthur Menard series. Taylor Gray picking up his first career Arkham and Art Series victory, but that also counts as a West victory, so that was his fourth career West Series win. We'll see him a couple of times later on in the season. As now Jake Drew starting to put some pressure on Trevor Huddleston. He's been working the bottom side of the racetrack and slowly, ever so slowly, making up some ground. Right now, he's a couple of car lengths back. Nick Janitis in the 77 car, directly in front of this battle. Will Nick get up and force, yeah, he's gonna force Trevor Huddleston to dive to the bottom side of the racetrack. Trevor hasn't been running that groove too much here in the second half of the race. So that car set up to run the top side, and right now, that's going to allow Jake Drew to get down to the bottom of the racetrack and try to make it stick. Trevor gonna hold him off. Hold on to that second position. Jake again working to the bottom side of the racetrack. Trying to take over the second position. Coming to 15 laps to go. 135 of the books, 15 to go here at Irwindale. Right now, this is the best battle on the racetrack. Trevor Huddleston has second. Jake Drew wants second. They're going to dive to the inside of Bridget Burgess through turns three and four. Bridget running in the 12th position. And Trevor can't make that pass stick, so Jake always going to fake to the outside and then try to dive to the bottom side as... Trevor drifts up the racetrack just a bit. That's going to allow Jake to pull alongside down into turns three and four. Trevor's got the momentum built up off of the top side of the racetrack. He's going to hold on to that second position for now. Here comes Jake Drew again to the bottom side. Doesn't want to give up. 13 circuits to go here at Irwindale. Trevor Huddleston 
Holding on to second, Jake Drew throwing everything but the kitchen sink at him so far. Now Jake going to follow in the tire tracks through turns three and four. Trying to cool those tires off for one more run at it here. I say one, I say one more run at it, but it's probably going to be a few more runs at it. Ten to go this time around. Ten laps remaining. There's Tanner Reif under the start finish line. There's the battle for second. Trevor Huddleston to the top side. Jake Drew to the bottom. They're about a full straightaway behind. of those cars sliding out of turn four right there. These guys thrashing at it. Doing everything they can. Either hold on to that position. That's what Trevor's trying to do. Or take that position. That's what Jake's trying to do. Again, Jake drawing alongside through turns three and four. You see that car wiggle just a touch. He's going to drop back. Behind Trevor Huddleston, they're going to work alongside Joey East. Joey a few laps back. Saw him running well up into the top five earlier tonight. Had that incident with the turn one wall. Back at the ninth position. Three laps down as we... Inside, 10 to go. Big Drew still stalking Trevor Huddleston through turns three and four. Handling starting to go away on the six car. We've seen that car wiggle a couple of times. Under power off of turn four. That could be exactly what Trevor Huddleston needs to hold on to that second position right now. No pressure at all for Tanner Reif. Tanner holding on to the advantage. Point three seconds to lead, and here comes Jake Drew one more time to the bottom side of the racetrack. Can't make it stick. Trevor Huddleston holding on to that second position. This has been a very clean battle for position, but we'll see what happens. Ooh, as we see contact there, and Chris Loudon going to go around. That puts us under the caution flag with just a handful of laps to go. Oh boy, folks, this changes everything. Chris Loudon with a little shove from Jake Drew going off into turn three. He's going to spin it around and make some contact with the outside wall, but that's going to stack us up for a restart. Let's take a look at what happened. He gave Trevor Huddleston plenty of room, but here comes Jake Drew. Jake with a lot of contact there going off into turn three. Loudon, nothing he could do. He was just along for the ride at that point. Made some contact with the outside wall. Damage to the driver's side, the left side. Here he comes right at you, folks. Ooh, that's as close as it gets right there. But that does put us under the caution flag, and that will send us into overtime. You're watching Arkham and Art Series West Racing on NBC Sports. General back to the Napa Auto Parts 150 at Irwindale Speedway. Chuck Welch making the left-hand turn off the racetrack. Probably a very safe move <laughs> based on what I think we're about to see. Coming back to the restart line. Tanner Rife, Trevor Huddleston on the front row. Single with the green flag back in the air on the hammer down into turn one. And we're going to stack them up down into turn one. Jake Drew gets into Trevor Huddleston. That's going to allow Cole Moore to move to the outside. He's going to take over the second spot. Austin Herzog is going to follow through. We're four wide behind him. Coming to the white flag. Tanner Reif taking the white flag. Still four wide behind him. Reif working his way down the back stretch. No pressure from behind. Tanner Reif looking through turns three and four. He will be looking at the checkered flag. Tanner Reif picking up career win number one here at Irwindale. Cole Moore across the line in second. 
Austin Herzog coming home in third. How about it? Tanner Reif in just his second career Arca Menard Series start. Picking up the general tire pole and qualifying and putting the exclamation point on it tonight with career win number one. This is Arca Menard Series West Racing only on NBC Sports and stream live on Flow Racing. Make sure you come on Art Series West Racing on NBC Sports is brought to you by Sue Chief, America's manufacturer of plumbing products, by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, Reese's, not sorry, and by Sprecher Fire Brewed Craft Soda, the official craft soda of ARCA. Welcome back to Irwindale Speedway. Let's take a look at tonight's Reese's Sweet Move of the Race, voted by you, the fans, on Twitter at ARCA underscore racing. The results are in, and you, the fans, have voted Cole Moore's move to miss that accident on the final restart. Tonight's Reese's sweet move of the race. Now let's send it down to Jesse and hear from tonight's winner, rookie Tanner Reif, celebrating down in victory lane. Man, I think it's I think it's first many. I think we're here to stay. I really think so. Uh, this team's such such a good job, and we're doing. This, I, I train every day, and I dedicated my life to this, and. I really put more work than, than I think I ever have to anything, and I'm really, really proud of everyone that helped us get here. A hard-fought win, career win number one for Tanner Reif here tonight at Irwindale Speedway. Let's take a look at the results of tonight's Napa Auto Parts 150 presented by the West Coast Stock Car Hall of Fame here at Irwindale Speedway. Tanner Reif picking up career win number one, led all 153 laps. What a dominant performance here this evening. Cole Moore slipped through that final restart to come home in second. Austin Herzog, Jake Drew, and P.J. Pedrincelli rounding out the top five. Trevor Huddleston was in the mix all night long. He got knocked out on that final restart. He's going to drop back to sixth. Takuma Koga, Sebastian Arias, Todd Souza, and Joey East rounding out the top ten. Pretty good night for Bridget Burgess. She's going to come home in 12th. Stafford Smith finishing in the 14th position. And Paul Pedrincelli rounding out our 15-car starting field. Honestly, we were probably a fourth-place car tonight, but the green-white checker, um, Trevor spun in front of me. I stayed in it, kind of got into him, and uh, the guys in second and third kind of pushed them out of the way. So we, we made it happen on the green-white checker, and uh, second's actually really good for what we had. It looked like the six and the 50 got into it a little bit. Um, you know, it looked like a racing deal to me, but I saw it as a, a chance that I could take to try to get some more position, and uh, it worked out to our advantage. Let's take a look at the unofficial standings after tonight's Napa Auto Parts 150. Jake Drew jumping into the series lead, free and clear. He's got a three-point advantage over Tanner Reif in second. Cole Moore sliding back into third. Austin Herzog and Todd Souza rounding out the top five. We're going to keep an eye on P.J. Pedrincelli and Joey East. They're back sixth and seventh. Takuma Koga, Sebastian Arias, and Bridget Burgess rounding out the top ten. You know, when you're looking forward, it's hard to tell whether or not uh, I was just the tires were spinning from my own doing or if I was getting jacked up from behind. Um, in the end, it, I don't know, it kind of seemed like we got squeezed three wide and I got the short end of the stick and uh, I got saved by the bumper of the six car and straightened back out, but by that point, I think our race was over. It's a bummer deal. I mean, I, it sucks because I think that was all kind of falling into our place. Um, Tanner was running a great Great race, but uh, I was going to use that caution to my advantage. And uh, I had a few tricks on my sleeve that I was going to try to pull on them. The next race for the NASCAR Touring Series schedule here on USA Network is the NASCAR Wayland Modified Tour. The Ground Pounders taking on the Richmond Raceway in Richmond, Virginia for the Wayland 100. You can catch it right here on USA Network on April 9th, starting at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Ricky Tanner Reif showed up to Irwindale with one thing on his mind, and that was to finish on top. He started on the pole, led every lap, and proved to the rest of the drivers he will be one to beat throughout the 2022 season. A lot of great racing action throughout the field tonight, and we expect that at every race throughout the rest of the schedule. Again, great job by Tanner Reif, the number nine team, grabbing their first victory of the season and the first win of Tanner's career. Congratulations to that team and that young man. Don't forget, folks, NBC Sports is your home for Arkham and Art Series East and West Racing, as well as the NASCAR Wayland Modified Tour. Thanks so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next time. Until then, so long, everybody. 
This copyrighted telecast may not be reproduced, retransmitted, or used in any form without the authorized written consent of NASCAR Broadcasting. NASCAR would like to thank all of our fans for your support, and we hope you enjoy today's broadcast.